you know, I, I'm a pessimist, and we've been hurt so many times before with this team and with this franchise, and we've had such high expectations before in the past that, you know, brought us right back down to earth real quick. And so I, I'm just kind of looking at this thing, trying to evaluate if something was to go wrong, like what could go wrong. And, and the, the one thing I keep kind of coming back to is really the head coach position. So with Matt Eberflus, you know, he – what can he show us that demonstrates that he's going to be the right guy for the job for this season and moving forward? Because we can't we can't do this whole, oh, we're going to draft a quarterback and then a year later get rid of the coach thing again. I mean, we've been through that over and over and over, and I don't want that to repeat. So what does Matt Eberflus truly have to do to sit here and solidify his job for, for the future? Man, I don't know. I, and I've thought about this a lot because I know that the next coaching cycle is going to be really, really cool and interesting and crazy because I think Mike Rabel is going to be hired the following year again, right? I think Ben Johnson held out this offseason, really, just because he was like, I don't really love any of these job opportunities. I might like some of them, but I don't love them. And I think next year he's going to get a lot more, I don't know, uh, A plus tier, you know, job opportunities like Cowboys or Bears, God forbid, if like Matt Eberflus really fumbles the bag here. But to speak on Matt Eberflus, and we've had these conversations a lot, and I, I same thing, man. I don't like being an op, a pessimist about this. I want to be an optimist about this. But like, I, Matt Eberflus is is the the unfortunate kind of like continuous recycling of the yes man that I kind of just see from the McCaskies. And I don't, I don't know how to feel about him. I think in terms of what I want to see out of him, we've talked about, like, what's Matt Eberflus's best case scenario? And it's to be a guy like uh, McDermott from Buffalo for the few years that they kind of, you know, like they did it for a few years, getting to playoffs, consistently competing for AFC championships, possibly maybe even a, a John Harbaugh. I always get them mixed up, Jim and John. But, like, I would say, like, a John Harbaugh, right? And to be, like, a game manager and to kind of delegate responsibility to everybody. But even then, that's not necessarily true because he's going to be defensive play caller this year, right? So I, I don't know how to feel about Matt Eberflus this year. I guess to to say, like, what can he do to really win me over this offseason and then moving into the regular season is fix his time management right? Because we've seen from last year, like a lot of problems with time management, have that aggressive play calling that isn't just stagnant and keep rolling with what you got in the second half of the off season. And I don't want to take all the points from you, but what do you think? Like that's, that's my big two, I guess, right. Is just kind of have like better clock management, time management, and then just keep the, keep the play calling consistent and use what you got. But I, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's interesting because we're looking at a situation with a guy here that, you know, when you look at his resume, I know he's considered to be a defensive guy, but, but when you go through his resume in the past, he's worked at all phases of the, the football game. You know what I mean? He's been an offensive mm -hmm. guy. He's done some special team stuff. And more recently with the Colts, he was a defensive guy, which is kind of what we see him as, but he, his, Football knowledge is very spread around. And I've heard some players kind of touch on the fact that they feel like he's a very high IQ head coach, which is nice to hear. Um, I, th I think what I think what's happening here is really, truly from his position, you really are leaning a lot on your coordinators, which is funny because both the coordinators from last year are gone, right? And so in with that kind of coaching style, I, I would think that, you know, he would have been gone with them, but he wasn't, you know, Ryan Poles kept him around. And I actually feel much better about these two coordinators that we have this year than I did last year. Right. So I think you're really going to try and bank on the fact that Shane Waldron is going to lead this offense pretty consistently. And, you know, you are not going to have to be very hands-on with that from Matt Eberflus's point of view. And I think the biggest thing to me is, you know, I look at last year and, even though we got so hot at the end of the season and things started coming together defensively after the Monta sweat trade and everything, it's still just that Owen force start just killed us. I mean, there was just no digging yourself out of that hole. It was so hard. And so even though it looked great, you still, you know, miss the playoffs. You still wound up having a, a very average season where still a lot of changes needed to be made. So I think they need to come out hot. I think it's important yeah. to get to get 
a win or two here pretty early in, in the season. And, you know, if we could talk about change all we want, I, I want to see it. That would be change. Like, come out hot, ready to go. The Bears start, you know, two and one, three and one. That would be very, very, very refreshing. And I would definitely tip my hat towards Matt Eberflus if, if they got that kind of start. Yeah, it's – I've had a lot of the thought process this – the last few days about the head coaching position, just like what I've been hearing from, you know, even the radio stations. I think one of their beat writers from 670 was mentioning that one of Matt Eberlus's strengths is delegation and hiring coordinators and letting them do their job. And I was like, I, I listened to it and he kind of was starting to backpedal from his point. And I'm sorry, I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but I was like, is that necessarily true? And even if that is true, if you are, I don't know. I guess you can't do worse than Alan Williams, right? And maybe that's not even within Matt Eberflus's control. So I don't want to like put the blame on Matt Eberflus. And then at the same time, Luke Getze, I think the Luke Getze byproduct was a was mostly due to Alan Williams, right? And we've talked about it during the season that you can't let go of both of your coordinators during the season and then somehow say that the head coach was doing everything he could to keep the keep the ship together. However, to be the positive side is how many, how much better could Matt Eberflus have done last year with what we've heard from Alan Williams being an obvious catastrophe in the sense of we still don't know what happened and why he got fired, but irrelevant, right? But even then, I think the first week or two of that season, he was an absolute like train wreck play caller, super yeah. vanilla, running like cover two and all that stuff. And then even from the like – hints and like little things that we hear from Vegas and what we hear from Luke Getze leaving here, Luke Getze was an absolute train wreck of a coordinator. So maybe he bought himself some time and maybe he bought himself some like some brownie points with management and Ryan Poles in the sense of like, this is the, these are the people, but that also attributes to the fact of like how much, how much responsibility was on Matty Refluse to hire those two guys and how does yeah, that I, delegation I fall on him? And that's, that's right, where I, I'm like, I do think we – I definitely am guilty of not giving him enough credit for what he did do last year. Right. And, yeah, keeping that thing afloat, man, that that was not an easy task. Yeah. that's I, can, I think we're in the same boat on that. Like, I feel bad about not liking Matt Eberflus too much, but I, I don't know why I should like him, if that makes sense. I don't know. I don't necessarily dislike him that much, but I don't know – if he's proven anything to say that he is super worthwhile, because I always, you know, what's our go-to standards for coaching? It's like guys like Mike Tomlin, Bill Belichick, and Mike Tomlin held on to hit Matt Canada for way too long. Yeah. Right. So that was one of those like, okay, Mike Tomlin probably could have done a better job too, but Mike Tomlin's always doing a like spectacular job. So I don't know. I thought about that. And then I thought about the guys that are still available or the guys that were passed up and maybe not offered the job like Ben Johnson or Mike Vrabel. And I thought about going into training camp when we start watching hard knocks and we saw like Ben Johnson or Mike Vrabel, is that going to inspire a lot more confidence than watching Matt Eberflus during hard knocks or I don't know. I So I guess, yeah, your point is 100% right. Cause winning cures all. If they start off like three and one, I think everybody's going to be really into Matt Eberflus but then it turns into how much of that credit deserves, you know, to be given to Matt Eberflus versus Shane Waldron or Eric Washington or whoever else. But I, I hope I hope Matt Eberflus proves us all wrong this year. You know what the Bill Belichick quote is, right? I believe it's Bill Belichick. Uh, players win games, coaches lose them. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs>